G'day, today I'm going to discuss the place that the BBC micro bit has in the classroom. Now the micro bit is a really tiny microcontroller board that's packed with heaps of goodies like an LED matrix, a couple of buttons, but even some modern day maker staples like an accelerometer, a magnetometer, which is a compass, and a low energy Bluetooth antenna. To connect the micro bit to the world around it, we have these tabs along one edge, and you can see those are labeled 0, 1, 2, and then 3 volt and ground for power. So you can connect to these tabs just with an alligator clip straight onto the tab, or with a 4mm banana plug for a sturdy fit. Now it might seem like micro bit only belongs in the physics and computer labs, but more and more, programming and electronics are making their way into art and design projects. And that's something that Microbit have really embraced. So let's have a look at the Microbit website where you can build all your code for the Microbit and also take a tour of some of the lesson plans and projects that they have put up. I've already navigated to microbit.org and for now let's just take a very quick look at the code editors. So we can go up to this Let's Code button and this will give us a choice between two different styles of editors. The graphical JavaScript blocks editor or the PXT and a Python editor. For now I'm just going to open up the blocks editor and I'll just go to blocks mode. So this is this is what you'll see when you go into the blocks editor. You can see that I've already got a project that I was working on before and immediately it's quite an intuitive layout. All of these blocks you can move them around and snap them into place and you can see that they want to snap in only one particular way so you can't make any mistakes just like this this thing called compass heading here, it has this jigsaw-like tab coming off it. So it can only go into pieces that will receive that tab. And it, I'll just familiarize you with this screen because we're going to look at some of the lesson plans and how it walks you through programming in this blocks editor. Just a quick side note, because all the code development for Microbit happens within the web browser, there's no need for any special software to be installed. All you need is the Microbit, a USB cable, and your web browser. Now that we've had a brief glance at the programming environment, let's see how it's used in a lesson plan. So back over on the home page, we can go up to this teach link, which is the teaching resources. And the BBC have put together this really cool three-part lesson plan called Defeat the Dalek. So you're using a micro bit to help Doctor Who save the universe, presumably. But the thing that I like about it is it's super engaging. So I'll just skip right to the end so that we can see how that programming environment is used in one of the lesson plans. I'll open up the, the part three mission hack. And this starts off with a, a kind of gamified version of programming where you use that same programming environment but in this, in this game environment to control a, a, a captured Dalek, I suppose. So I'll just wait for that to load. Okay, now that that's finished loading, we can enter the lesson. I'll just skip through the intro scenes. And the very first thing we do is kind of like virtually wiring up the micro bit. So this is, this is a nice intuition building exercise where you can wire up the power supply to the micro bit and then connect the motor, presumably the Dalek's motors, to the general purpose input and output pins. And now we can recode this micro bit to control the Dalek. So we have this, this five by five grid which forms a maze. And you might recognize this block structure which is exactly that PXT block programming that we saw before. So this Dalek, we need to move it forward to this orb. So I think that's one, two, three, four steps. So we need to loop four times and drive the motor forwards and then you run the code and it executes the code right in front of you and you can see it working. So I'll just skip to perhaps the end to see something a little more substantial. So now we're doing something a little more complicated. We have to move our Dalek through the course, turn it and then blast this obstacle that's in the way. So in the rewire screen we, we got a new piece of hardware which was the blaster. It's connected to an input or an output rather and now we've written some code. This time we're using the Python language so we we have the structure of the Python language but it's still in that kind of broken down to the essence of. We just need to loop this several times and perform these actions. So it's more based around building programming intuition rather than just memorizing syntax. And of course you can move between the blocks editor, the Python and JavaScript languages to you know cater for whatever whatever uh, a student is most comfortable with. And changes that you make in one are reflected in the other. 
So then if you run that, you can see it's looping forward to move forward four times, then it turns to the right and activates the blaster, and then it proceeds. So that's all well and good as like an engaging, gamified, intuition building experience. But once that's complete, the, the real fun begins down where you can program the micro bit directly to perform a similar task. So that, that grid in that uh, flash game was purposely chosen as 5x5 five five because that's the exact dimension of the LED grid that's on the micro bit. So this gives students an opportunity to essentially perform the same tasks but on the hardware right in front of them rather than just in, in some web-based game. So the idea being that you can print out a, a, a blank maze sheet, draw some walls in, and then get the LED, the LED grid on the micro bit to behave in the correct pattern to solve that maze. So that's just one lesson plan out of many that are available. And another one that I quite like is this probably more traditional approach, which is this KS3 ICT topics bundle lesson. And that's, that's a lot more conventional approach to teaching these computer science ideas. Returning now to this idea of programming and electronics as components in art, music, and design projects, we can jump over to the ideas page where Microbit hosts lots of really cool projects that are good for inspiration. And these aren't just made by Microbit, they're submitted by users of Microbit. So a lot of them are submitted by students. But you can really see that there's a broad, uh, there's a broad emphasis on electronics as craft rather than just robots. So we can see there's this this illuminated message box that has an, uh, colorful LEDs inside that can change their colors. So this, this message changes colors over time or a few, um, a few audio and visual projects as well. So you can see there's a pretty big emphasis on electronics and craft with Microbit. And because they're available at commodity prices, it's, they're super appropriate for these kind of projects. There you have it, a quick tour of the educational and teaching resources behind the BBC Microbit. Now, if you make any projects with the micro bit, we'd love to hear from you in our forums. I'll catch you next time.